I would like to offer uh, some sort of reassurance here, buddy, out of the shoot. I would like to offer a little reassurance to all the Jet fans who are not sure how the Jets will play this week. I would like to let everybody know that the Jets are going to play exceptionally well. Now, do you know how I know this? What gives you such confidence, BD? I'll tell you. Uh, I saw a tweet yesterday which uh, really, really emboldened me to open up the mic and say what I just said. You know who the, who the, who the, who the tweet came from? Who was the that? The tweet came from the owner. <laughs> and you know what the tweet was about? <laughs> uh, let me guess. Uniform. Yes. <laughs> the Jets will wear white on white with green helmets. Woody Johnson told us that means the Jets are ready to play well. Have no fear, Jets fans. Oh, God. Can somebody please deactivate this guy's account? There it's, is. I, I can't, I just, I, the, the tweets. They, I don't know why his tweets bother me so much. Well, I mean, I do. But they really bother me. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> you text shouldn't. every time we, that he does what you text us about it. So, but that's not the issue this week. It's not the issue right now. The issue is this Jets team kind I mean, this isn't a must win, obviously. It's too early in a season that they're not supposed to make the postseason. They're supposed to get better, but not make the postseason. But you're hearing this with a lot of teams in the NFL going into week two. It's a must win. You know, I'm down here in Jacksonville uh, at TIAA Bank Stadium right now. I'm actually in the stadium broadcasting, which is kind of cool. Um, but the Colts are kind of in a must win because they tied the Houston Texans last week and they're a team that's supposed to be competitive. The Jets also can are kind of in that conversation a little bit simply because of what Robert Sala did last weekend, mm -hmm. or at least after last weekend. I agree. Um, it's to an extent. I don't view it as a must win necessarily, so I, I wouldn't co-sign that. But I would certainly say, and I was talking to Hoff about this before the show, it it's a must play well type mm. of game. You know, the the, the uh, you know, let's face it, the, the story started to be written now. And as a head coach, you never want it to be that many chapters in one game and into your second season. But when you accelerate things, as Robert Sala did, you know, this week, the receipts and taking on the fans and then slightly walking it back and everything that we saw, plus the way they played offensively on, on Sunday against the Ravens, this is an incredibly pivotal point in Robert Sala's tenure. There's no other way to skin this. You know, win or lose, whatever, it better be a four-quarter game. And I'll tell you the thing that I'm looking for most, all right? I, listen, to, to think that Flacco's coming out and throwing for 319 with three touchdowns, you know, earth to Jets fans. Uh, nobody expects that. What I expect from our head coach, okay, what I expect is a short rope. If, if, if Joe Flacco's not playing well, all right, then he better be benched. And I think that there's, and I mean benched, and I mean benched fast, and benched for the rest of the year until until our boy comes back, the golden boy, hopefully. I think there's three things you look at right now with the Jets, and I think there's three things that, and I know this might seem like almost too definitive of a stance to take uh, one game into year number two, but you tell me if you think that I'm off base. Number one, all right, how the Jets respond to their coach emotionally. He went to a place that was fairly aggressive. Let's see how his, how his, how his boys respond, number one. Number two, the young offensive coordinator. You can't throw it 59 times with a statue with a dinosaur. You can't throw it 59 times with a young stud. At least you shouldn't. Let's see how the young OC responds. And number three, and this, I said this before, how tolerant is the head coach of poor play? If Flacco plays poorly, he's got to be benched. Those are three really important things that I think, well, I think we'll get pretty good reads on, on, on what he's going to be this week. I think the biggest one of those, BT, is the last one that you said, and that is being tolerant of poor play. And consistent poor play has to be um, penalized. You have to not be out on the field uh, for a team that needs – that needs a culture change, and at least this is what we're talking about from a new coaching staff, even though they're, all, they're in their second year, a culture change and attention to detail, all that accountability that all the new coaches are talking about. The only way that that really shows itself is if when you play poorly, you, you don't play. You know, or, for instance, the Colts, Rodrigo Blankenship, right? He missed two extra, a field goal, game-winning field goal, kicked two uh, balls out of bounds last week for the Colts. They cut him. Right. So I'm not saying it's got to be that extreme, but that's the that's the mentality that you have to have, especially when you know the team's still going to turn over. You know that there's still work to be done to make this team really good. It's got you got to see it right. You can't just allow mediocrity 
to reign on a team like the Jets, who have for so many years been trying to get right. And this is a chance to get right because they have some talent, but the only way it's going to happen is if poor play is penalized. You're right. It's 10.08 on the fan. It's the Tiki and Tierney Show, 877-337-6666, inside of our Town Fair Tire Studio on this Football Friday. Uh, of course, you always get the guarantee lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Hopefully, you guys cashed in a little bit. I told you the Bolts would cover the four. They did. Uh, nice job by the Mets. Obviously, a ton of football today. We'll squeeze in baseball later. You know, it's interesting, though, to me. And, you know, as I, as I restate my, my main premise out of the shoot is that this is a real pivotal point for Salva here. We're going to remember this, this, not necessarily this game, but we're going to remember this period. You know, how they looked in week one offensively, what he said in the ensuing days, and then obviously how they respond in, in game two against a team that painted a 1953 elf on the middle of their football field. And somehow they think that that's actually inspiring. If you lose to the – listen <laughs> – the Brett with Jacoby Brissett under under center, who's not a scrub, obviously, but he's not Lamar Jackson. I and I've said this all week. I think the Jets will play really well this week. I think the Jets will have a real chance chance to win. I love the Jets at plus six and a half. But the thing about Salah, and this is what's crazy about the Jets' tortured, pathetic history. All right, we all lament what they've been, but the funny thing is, the funny thing is, is that. Every coach, just about, even like Pete Carroll, uh, started off very well. Herm Edwards, all right, had 10 wins and 9 wins in his first two years, made the playoffs both seasons. Mangini had a 10-win season, made the playoffs, then went 4-12, and then 9-7 and with Favre, then gone. Then, of course, we know Rex, who came out with two winning seasons, two deep playoff runs. Even Adam Gase had seven wins in his first season without a lot of talent and then bottomed out at 2-14 and and was gone, thank God. And now here, like, so Robert Sala, as much as all the Jets, I don't know, I don't know how else to this, like, just their whole history, um, <laughs> kind of, like, you throw it in a pot, you stir it around, and it's all pretty much gross. At least those coaches, and, and those are all in succession, by the way, I didn't skip anybody from Herm, they distinguish themselves somewhat, somewhat early. Robert Sala was 4-13. and 13. Mm-hmm. Now he's 0-1. Now he's pushing some chips into the middle of the table, and now it's go time based on how he sped up his timeline. Well, I think the interesting thing about this team, because I, I try to figure out what the goal is. We've talked about this with the Giants multiple times, how everyone's, oh, we could win. We start the season 3-0 and or, you know, we, we, they could win. That's not the focus, and it can't be the focus for the Giants. But for the Jets, I feel like their focus is trying to win. And I wonder if the priority is wrong, right? I wonder if the priority of trying to win is over – um, is 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 being put is put more emphasis on than trying to get the best players on the on the field and identifying who your best players are. Why can't right? you and, do both? Because it's hard. It's hard. Like because you, for instance, and Joe Flacco is the perfect example. You play Joe, Joe Flacco is a statue, right? Your offensive line struggles in pass protection. Mm-hmm. We know we know what he's capable of doing. We know what his limitations are right now. Yet you're going to keep running him out there unabashedly, running him out there. And as a result, you're never going to find out how good Garrett Wilson can be, right? You're not going to find out how good Elijah Mitchell uh, um, uh, can be, right? You're not going to f- – uh, Elijah Moore, I'm thinking of a running back. Mm, you. you're not gonna, who's out, for, by the way, for a while. Yeah, he is San Francisco, yeah. Um, but Elijah Moore, you're not going to find out how good these guys can be because you're not giving yourself the right um, quarterback – to, to facilitate that. And I, I know winning Joe Flacco gives you a better chance to win. But in actuality, he might not give you a better chance to evaluate everybody else. And I think that that's the challenge that, that Robert Sala has to face right now. Because you, what you said is right, BT. He needs to win. He can't go 4-13 and 13 again, right? He can't go 5-12. and 12. He's got to show progress, and the team's got to look better. But the only way that that's going to happen is if the priority is to highlight um, the guys outside of the quarterback, and that's hard to do when Joe Flacco is your quarterback. I mean, listen, we're all – well, not all, because I'm not sure how many people have Amazon Prime or, or you know, I'm sure some older people don't really know how to get there and wh- whatever. I'm not assuming everybody saw the game last night. I watched a good chunk of it, obviously, juggling with the Mets and a good – nice job by them jumping out on a bad team early, which is what you needed to see. But – 
as you watched the game last night, and, and nobody's saying that Zach Wilson's ever going to remotely approach the stratosphere of a Mahomes or a Herbert. Although, when you draft the second overall in the NFL draft, I don't know that it's that unrealistic to expect that. You might probably should. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but we won't. We, 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 we won't even do that. But, man, oh, man, we're watching last night Mahomes, like a sidearm shortstop fling touchdown. Herbert gets gets rocked in the rib dimes. It, it's, it's really – I don't expect that. I don't expect that with Zach yet, and I certainly don't expect that – with Joe Flacco. But I'll tell you what I do expect. I do expect, I don't know, is it unrealistic of me to expect whether they, they defer or they take the ball, whatever happens, their first offensive possession. I don't know, man. Can you carve out a 12 or 13 play drive and carve out 7, 8, I know this isn't the 80s, it's not going to be 12 minute drive, 7, 8 minute drive, you know, rip all four, five first downs, get inside the tight red, have a real chance for a touchdown. If you don't get that, have a chip shot field goal. I mean, is that too much to ask? Yeah. Especially Wait, it with, is? It, yeah. Well, then, it, it what is. the hell am I going to watch the game for? It, it is too much to no, ask. No, it's when, not when, too much when, to when, ask. When the, when, because you, you're putting the cart in front of the horse. What do you mean? Right? You're, you're, you're getting to this co- cohesive, put together offense, well orchestrated, well thought out, well, well executed. You're putting that first, right? The, the, the thing that needs to happen is Joe Flacco has got to be put in a position to just throw a completion, right? That that's where this that's where the disconnect is. I think everybody's trying to see the big picture for the New York Jets as opposed to focusing on the little things, and those little things are more important, right? How do I make this easy on my offensive line, right? How do I how do I get uh, my skill position players into space? So instead of thinking big picture. The Jets got to think smaller, right? They really do. And I, I, it's hard because everybody came into this season expecting the Jets to be a, a, an advanced team, like or advanced from where they were over oh, the last least, couple yeah, of an, seasons. An ascending team. It's an Somewhat, ascending team yes. in some way. But I, I just I, – I don't think they're there. And I, well, and I obviously not based on the Ravens game, but they've got the weapons, so – I'm not yes. So, so yes. Points, but. So yes. So make it easy, right? Just have a little success. Have a success. That's all you need, right? So to have a a nine play, twelve play, you know, score touchdown scoring drive. It's easy to say those. It's easy to say that, right? Yeah. But in order to do that, all the other little things got to happen first. And uh, you know, last week we criticized Mike Lafleur. We obviously criticized the offensive line. We criticized Joe Flacco. But until you get those little things happening, the big thing is never going to happen. Well, that's encouraging, Teak. I'm not to say I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying those little things got to happen first. Yeah, no, I listen. Conceptually, I'm with you. I, I get that. Fundamentally, you're a thousand percent right. But I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. But wasn't that what last year was for? Like, if this was Robert Salva's, and I know there's some new players. I get that. But if this was Robert Salva's first year with the Jets, yeah, and you know, and and, and you have a first year offensive coordinator and an entirely new staff, and you try to fumigate this losing stench from the building. I, I would be a little more willing to co-sign what you just said to me, and, and I don't mean you as a loser mentality, but mm-hmm. obviously I'm not saying you, but to me that is that is a bit of a loser mentality. Can we expect a little more than that? Well, I, so the, here's the problem, Come BT. On. I think coming into this season, everybody was, was making assumptions about where the Jets were. But coming into this season, there was a lot of noise that was non-football focused with the New York Jets. Whether it was the Mackay Becton nonsense, whether it was the you know looking back on previous drafts that guys have you know failed at, you know um, whether it was the Zach, Zach Wilson Will- stuff. Zach Wilson stuff, like all yeah. that. It was none of it was football focused, okay. right? And and I and I feel like Jets fans and Jets the organization they like they they're not focused on what matters, right? What matters is taking little steps, right? It's 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 getting. I don't know the the culture right. It's getting the expectation right. Um, it's why, honestly, when we have had these conversations about the Jets and the Giants, I've always kind of felt that the Giants were ahead of the Jets, even though the Jets should be ahead of the Giants because the Giants have those little things in order. And we saw it last week, right? Daniel Jones isn't perfect, but you know what? He's had some resi- showed some resiliency, right? This offensive line isn't elite. They had a, they had allowed fifty nine percent pressure on pass on um, on on non blitz pass situations, which is the, the highest in the league by almost ten points. But 
they were kicking ass as a run as a run blocking team. Right. So it was they were doing the little things that, and we saw it in the preseason and it showed itself in week one. The Jets, I, I don't know if they're doing those little things. Right, They're, they look terrible offensively last week. Defensively, maybe, but we know this is an offensive-driven game, and so I, I think the priorities have been messed up with the New York Jets because everybody's talking big picture and everybody wants to see down the line, as opposed to focusing on just getting a little bit better every day. That that's that's a hard thing to do when you're rebuilding and not a very good team, like both the Giants and the Jets have been. Yeah. But the Jets, in particular, I mean. That week one looked horrible. It, they looked they looked like they looked worse than the Dallas Cowboys did. And the Cowboys only scored three points. Yeah, yeah. L- listen, you know you know me long enough. I'm not I'm not a person of excuses. You know that about me, right? But let me at least just throw this out there. Is there anything to the fact that it was raining the whole game? I mean, let, let's at least throw it out there. Um, I don't know. Maybe Corey I mean, Davis. Let me get Corey Davis drop balls last year, but yeah. you know, maybe Davis holds on to that ball. Maybe the Conklin elements. doesn't fumble. I, I, I don't I know. Can, I can't make an excuse. It's not an excuse, but rain. It, I, I'm not. But seriously, I'm not. seriously, rain happens. <laughs> elements happen. I know. I mean, I mean, I know we've gotten soft. As a sporting public these days, well, as a society, we're completely uh, soft. I mean, we're it, it's, soft. it's it rains outside. Oh, we got to cancel the soccer game. Oh, it rains outside. Oh, we got to you know let's postpone this you know, yeah. baseball game. Come on, yep, right? Yeah. Uh, so I, I can't. Right, so I can't, you're not buying it. But I can't. I can't, buy, I can't buy that for right. professional football players. Okay. Right. Yeah. I play plenty of games in the rain. <laughs> You know what I mean? I got you. And, and, and quarterbacks have thrown plenty of balls in the rain. It's, there's no excuse for it. You figure All it out. Right. All right. And if Eight, you don't, you're not good enough to be there. Fair enough. 877-337-6666. Tiki and Tierney on the fan. A little jet stuff out of the shoe. G-Men, we're getting to you at 11. Although, we are giving away giant tickets coming up in about five minutes for the home opener. That's going to be awesome. And we'll give them away again in the 11 o'clock hour. Yankees back to work this weekend. Mets get the win. But I'll tell you this, and we'll, we'll really, really get through these calls coming up next here on the Fantiki and Tierney. It seems like an overreaction. I know that we're good at that in this city. We overreact, and we certainly react to everything. That's how we're wired. But you're going to have a rough time convincing me. If the Jets go out there and they get shellacked on Sunday, which I don't think they will, but if they do, after the cards that their coach just played, you may as well start writing the uh, the obituary for him. Honestly, I mean, I, I I don't know where it goes from there. It's it felt ugly this week. Think about how much uglier it could get.